October the 29th, 2016. I'm Dana Durham Fritz, your host, nuclearproctologist.org. And what you're looking at is Unit 4. Now, Dr. Christopher Busby is terrified of coming out and saying the fuel pool can't be in the building. He's horrified to say that there's damage to the reactor core to fuel pool, I guess, but he won't come out and talk about what you're looking at, the fake pictures. These are all the official pictures. He, he won't say they don't match up because he's worried about sounding about a, like a conspiracy theorist. He's worried that uh, the media will come out and make fun of him. He's not worried about telling the truth, I guess, but he's worried about the media coming out or somebody else demonizing him for saying Seth Dorn is not inside that building. It's not possible. He's not in, that's not, Seth's claim is in the fuel pool. The fuel pool is at the top of the building and the top of the building behind me is obviously gone. This is Unit 4 in Japan. What do you say to people like that? Do you say that they're disingenuous and they're deceptive and deceitful? Or do you say they have a legitimate concern? I'll leave it up to you in the comment section. Please email this to all of Dr. Christopher Busby's friends and associates and people who post his material and ask him to ask him the question. I want the question answered. I'm not asking, I'm demanding it. I'm Dana Durford, the nuclear proctologist. <laughs> .arg. We'll catch everybody. On the rebound. Take care, folks. The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. You're here in Japan this time uh, regarding the children's uh, loss of concerning children's health and safety and also demanding that the government actually evacuate all the children out of Fukushima. Um, but the Japanese government has not considered uh, the standard level or the safety, safe level of, of radiation in Japan and, and they, they said that it's okay to, they've been saying that it's okay to, to play around in, outside and they have not been, they have not considered any mass evacuation out of Fukushima. What do you think about that? We do feel that the Japanese government is quite wrong, criminally wrong in fact, n not to organize the, um, the evacuation of at least children and probably also adults from areas where the radiation levels are high, the, the contamination levels are high. Mm -hmm. Now with, with regard to that, the, uh, governments are never uh, 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 an organization they also con they, they always consist of individuals mm -hmm. and it's the individuals in those governments that make decisions um, that these decisions are wrong and they fail to act on that mm -hmm. then there are such things in the past as war crimes uh, in the case of the Second World War of course Hitler decided as a government that the National Socialist government that they could put the Jewish people in concentration camps mm -hmm. and gas them. Mm -hmm. These were all decisions made by government, but ultimately an individual is responsible. And, and uh, although those were considered to be war crimes, it, to my mind this is equally well a war crime, mm. although it's happened in peacetime. Right. And these people who are individually responsible and can mm. be named, I mean mm. I don't know what the names are, but mm -hmm. these people exist, uh, ultimately I think they may have to face some kind of uh, a kind of trial that would result in, in, in them going to jail for a very mm. long time. The, J the Japanese government has adopted ICRP standard model, um, but at the, s at the same time it hasn't actually followed or protect, uh, it hasn't actually uh, kept the ICRP warning. Uh, you have you have criticized the ICRP model. And what what your uh, stance on that toward get the Japanese okay. government? Okay. Well, in, in a sense, that? the government has uh, remained within the constraints mm -hmm. that laid down by the ICRP because I believe that the ICRP permits uh, up to 20 millisieverts exposure in emergency situations, and clearly this is an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. Um, the, norm, the normal uh, uh, acceptable limit um, is, uh, is, is one millisievert, but this, this is from all sources. 
And uh, in, in most interpretations of this, for instance, in the United States and in Europe, uh, reduce that down to about 0.1 millisievert for exposure from a single source. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, whichever way you look at it, the Japanese government has permitted people already mm -hmm. to be exposed to higher levels than one millisievert. And mm -hmm. my own belief, having done these air filter experiments, uh, is that probably a very large number of people who have been exposed higher than 20 millisieverts mm -hmm. from internal radionuclides. Oh. The, the Japanese government is completely out of order mm. uh, in, in making the decisions that, it, that it's made. And, and, if, and as I said in the last uh, answer, if it continues now that it has this information from the ECRR model mm -hmm. and from the measurements that we've made, it continues to pursue this course of action then I believe that it's acting uh, in, in some criminal sen in some sense uh, uh, as a criminal organization mm. and ultimately will be, will be brought to justice in some right. way. Right. You said that there is a difference between ICRP between the actual and models, yes, the CR there, there models. is a difference, yeah. Uh, well. Could you explain that a little bit, uh, okay. what, why it's... Uh... Okay. Well, the, the first thing you have to know is that the ICRP model doesn't work. So if you predict the number of cancers after an exposure to internal radionuclides, you get the wrong answer. Well, the ICRP model uh, was set up in 1952, and DNA wasn't discovered until 1953. Mm -hmm. The ICRP uh, was, asked, uh, was set up in order to, uh, to look at the health effects of the radiation exposures from the manufacture of atom bombs. Mm -hmm. That's what it was for. Because uh, after, after the Second World War, there was a massive expansion in the manufacture of atom bombs, and plutonium and uranium and all these substances which were like normally not there mm -hmm. were being released all over the place. So the ICRP had to quickly figure out how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And so the way in which they did it was, 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 was take a, a physics-based approach. So they're mostly physicists, because it was physicists who do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And to a physicist, the, the easy, what you do is you, is you reduce everything to the simplest format right. in order to get a mathematical equation. Because you can't write down a mathematical equation about a person. It's too complicated. Mm. So what they did is they turned a person into a bag of water. And then they, they said that the exposures had to be uh, um, regulated on the basis of the amount of energy that was, was trans transmitted into the bag of water. It's kind of simple. Right. It was very easy to do that. It's a very simple model. You, you have a bag of water in the shape of a person, you put a thermometer inside it, yeah. you fire radiation in it, and you see if the temperature goes up. Right. And that, that enables you to, 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 to define absorbed dose. All right. But the model actually is, or ICRP, because it's uh, because it's promoting, or from their point of view, from their promoting uh, the the promoting nuclear energy, nuclear uh, power. Well, plants they wouldn't say no. They wouldn't say that they're promoting anything. They would right. say that they're an independent structure of of scientists who independently assess the risks from radiation. Mm. They would never ever say that they're promoting nuclear power. Right, but that it's that's just how it happens. It's just how it works out. This all happens behind the scenes. Mm. Actually, I mean, many of us believe that they were originally set up to promote nuclear weapons, mm. or rather not to promote them, but to prevent people from stopping their development. That's mm. what it was about. So all those people who said, oh, look, you know, there's all this strontium-90 in the milk and little Jimmy's got leukemia, mm -hmm. they could say, well, it's nothing to do with the nuclear weapons because we, we can tell you that the doses are too low. Right. That's what it was originally about. And when the doctors started to complain about this, mm -hmm. what they did is they constrained the doctors. So in 1959, they forced the WHO to, into an agreement with the IAEA, mm -hmm. whereby the IAEA was responsible for radiation and health. Mm -hmm. The International Atomic Energy Agency mm -hmm. was responsible for health. And the WHO, the World Health Organization, was, was not allowed to, to, to think about radiation. They mm -hmm. had to think about mosquitoes and, and, right. and stuff, you know, and AIDS. Mm. Yeah. So there was a quite clear distinction there. Hmm. So that was almost proof, if you like, that, 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 it was, uh, that, the, that the ICRP was there to kind of like control the understanding of risk. And, th and they still are. That's still where they are. And is that, why, is that why the standard, their model, is set up not to... Uh, Look at internal this, radiation. Their safety level, right? Yes, yeah, sure. Not. I believe so. Of course, they would never admit it. Right. I just wanted to ask you about the, your past experience with testifying in court in similar cases. Uh, you said that you have testified more than 40 times, maybe across the world. Yes. I've done quite a few court cases. 
in which I've used the ECR model mm -hmm. um, to act as an expert witness for people who've been harmed by radiation mm -hmm. exposure, internal radiation. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of different examples in the United States, people who worked with radioactive substances, people who lived near a nuclear power station, uh, people who lived near a nuclear site in Los Angeles was mm -hmm. one. Um, and in the United Kingdom, I'm, I'm an expert witness on a number of court cases and tribunals relating to uh, veterans of the nuclear atomic That's testing. Right. That's right. Now all of these, what they all have in common mm -hmm. is that these people have suffered, uh, developed cancer mm -hmm. uh, or leukemia uh, and this was following the uh, internal exposure to exactly the same sort of substances that we're talking about here right. in Japan. And in every one of those cases uh, we have succeeded. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and so, the, the, so if you like to see it as a sort of a boxing match or some kind of contest mm -hmm. between the ICRP and the ECRR. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say that if you put that in court mm -hmm. with, um, with a jury mm -hmm. or with an unbiased judge or with mm -hmm. a tribunal of three judges, they always find in favor of the ECRR uh, um, right. interpretation and never in favor of the ICRP. And yeah. indeed, the defense in all of these cases have, have singularly failed to bring any expert witnesses in, into court mm -hmm. to, to, um, to, uh, to testify that the ICRP model is right. Because actually it's really quite difficult to testify that it's right, right since all of the evidence shows that it's wrong. Mm. And in a court, you rely on the evidence. So mm. there's no good saying, hey, this is the ICRP and everybody believes it, and look at this guy, he's, you know, he's the head of the ICRP and isn't he important and all of mm. that stuff. Because mm. in court, that doesn't, that doesn't cut any ice, you mm. know. So if you had a chance, and if, you, if uh, the Japanese plaintiffs invited you to, oh sorry, uh, the Japanese plaintiffs. In the Koryama case. In Koryama yeah. case, invites you over to testify, right. would you do that? Well, I will, I'm quite happy to testify and produce a report on right. this right. as an expert witness. And if I were going to testify, I would want to testify by video link. I absolutely don't want to go anywhere near this, because having seen what I've seen about the radiation levels, I, I'm too frightened mm. to go closer to... Uh, to this site than about 100 kilometers and even 100 kilometers I'm not too happy about. I was in Eizu Wakabatsu and the, the, there was a sig the significant amount of radioactivity on the ground there mm -hmm. which I didn't expect. Right. I've been quite shocked by the amount that I found here. Uh, and I noticed it this morning. I sat down in the, in the hotel and I'm looking out over Tokyo mm -hmm. and everybody's going around their business, people with umbrellas and yeah. young women and men with all their white uh, and mm -hmm. so on. And it all it looks perfectly normal. Right. And at Eizu Wakamatsu, it looks perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. Probably if you went within five kilometers of the actual accident site, it would look perfectly normal. You wouldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. But actually, what you have there is, um, is an enormous amount of radioactivity and a lot of particles floating around the place that, that can kill you. And you just right. can't see them. Right, exactly. And you don't know that they're there. Because you don't have eyesight that mm. see ra radioactivity, and unless you carry a Geiger counter, right. you can't measure it. Right. And even if you carry a Geiger counter, you can be misled by the fact that it's saying so many microsieverts per hour, mm. when in reality what the problem is, is is nothing to do with the microsieverts per mm. hour. It's the stuff that produces the microsieverts per hour that's floating about in the air, mm. and then it goes inside you. So, so this is the, the, when you know this, you don't want to go very close to these places. A lot of my colleagues are dead. Right. They went to Chernobyl. We would, like you ask, we would like to ask you uh, the results from your car filter experiment. Okay. Uh, just briefly mention right. that. And okay, so, so I have to say that first of all, this is quite, um, this is just preliminary results. We mm -hmm. have had, f f we've looked at five car filters, mm -hmm. uh, one of them from Chiba City and four of them from somewhere along the 100 kilometer uh, mark. Mm -hmm. But one of them drove within 30 kilometers of, of the plant. Mm -hmm. um, and what they show is that all of the Fukushima ones show higher levels than the, than the Chiba City one. Right. But the Chiba City one still is quite high. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, what they, and they all contain uh, gamma-emitting isotopes which are certainly from the plant. And the evidence is also that they contain uranium, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more difficult to be sure about the uranium. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, w uh, one, of the f one of the filters we tested for alpha, alpha particles and what this shows is that they do contain alpha emitters and at least one uh, alpha emitting particle, which was about 0.5 millimeter diameter. Mm -hmm. So that's what we found. We, we, we are also, of course, um, th they are still being analyzed with more sophisticated equipment to look mm -hmm. for plutonium. 
and we'll know about that in a couple of weeks' time. So then the question is, what does that mean? It means, basically it means that the concentration in air of cesium-137 is about 1,000 times higher mm -hmm. than it was at the top of the nuclear weapons testing in 1963. Wow. Okay? So that is really quite serious, because mm -hmm. we know that the nuclear weapons testing in 1963 caused an increase in infant mortality and caused a cancer epidemic 20 years later. Right. But this is 1,000 times higher than that. Mm -hmm. Um, and in Chiba City it was 300 times higher than that, mm -hmm. so the ratio is about 3 to 1. Mm -hmm. Which makes me feel that probably their significant uh, radioactive exposures to the south of Tokyo, you know, so further away mm -hmm. even. Yeah, the, the final thing that we seem to see, seems to show is that the radioactivity is, is not uniformly distributed. Mm -hmm. We kind of knew that anyway, but right. this, this, this confirms it. So there's some parts, some areas where it's quite high, mm -hmm. some areas where there's not very much of it. And this is exactly like Chernobyl. So mm -hmm. if you look at maps of the contamination on the ground from Chernobyl, it's rather like a leaf shape with lots mm -hmm. of lobes coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, and they tend to go along river valleys. So that's what we found there. And now, so what, what, what do we no do next? Right. Well, what, what has to, a number of things, but, but the first thing is that people who live in these areas where the radioactivity is, is, is high, mm -hmm. where these air concentrations are high, uh, should leave. And in particular, the children should be got out, because children are, are more, um, up to ten times more sensitive to radiation. Right. Uh, and of course, they're not going to suddenly die, but all, this, all of this stuff is right. going to happen sometime in the future, mm -hmm. but it certainly is going to happen. So it is... Uh, it is already an assault on these people in, in a sort of legal sense, mm -hmm. and they should get. They, and, and, but if they get out now, then it won't get any worse. Right. Yes. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the government must uh, urgently overfly the area and mm -hmm. produce accurate radiation density maps, mm -hmm. which is which which is old technology. It is already an assault on these people in, in a sort of legal sense, mm -hmm. and they should get. They, and, and, but if they get out now, then it won't get any worse. Right. Yes. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the government must uh, urgently overfly the area and mm -hmm. produce accurate radiation density maps, mm -hmm. which is which which is old technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no problem about this. Could have done it long ago, and maybe they even have. Mm. Because the people need to have the information. Mm -hmm. uh, the information is just not there. Mm. Uh, this information has to be printed out and put on the internet, and everyone needs to know what. what so they know where they can go and where they can't. Where it's going to be radioactive, where it isn't going to be radioactive, mm -hmm. and then they can make their decision about this. Mm -hmm. Then, in my opinion, areas that are contaminated at approximately the same level as the Chernobyl exclusion zone should be fenced off. And, mm. and this is nothing to do with 30 kilometers. Some right. of this stuff is out at 120 kilometers. Mm. Mm. And if this was like your, if this was poison gas mm -hmm. and it was going to kill you tomorrow, people would be, be running. They'd be running. Right. But what I'm saying is it is poison gas. It's just not going to kill you tomorrow. It's going to kill you like a few years' Tenure. time, see? You know, the third thing is that people who have to remain in areas of slightly lower radioactivity but which are still contaminated mm -hmm. should be compensated uh, because this is an assault. It's, it's just the same as if someone was hit on the head with a, with a log. Right. You know? uh, they've been assaulted. Some, uh, their bodies have been contaminated with material which uh, has a significant chance of killing them. Mm. And under any legal system in the world, this mm. is illegal. This mm. is against the law. So what can you do about that? Well, you, you can certainly compensate them for that and the people who should compensate them are of course the people who contaminated them mm -hmm. so the nuclear industry and also therefore the, the, comp yeah, the compensation uh, not just from the Japanese nuclear industry but also from the international nuclear industry because I see this as kind of global this is a sort of global problem right right the, uh, the next thing you have to do is you have to with uh, throw s as much money as the world has mm -hmm at sealing those reactors. Mm -hmm. if, it, if, you have to, if you have to mine underneath them and put concrete bases and then put a glow, dome over the top of them, and if it costs a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. then it has to be done. Right. Because this, is this stuff's coming out all the time, mm -hmm. and it's going to slowly make the whole of North Japan into a radioactive wasteland, like mm -hmm. Ma Mad Max or some horror movie from the future. Mm -hmm. But not only that, it's going to get all around the globe. We picked up plutonium in England, there's plutonium in Hawaii, there's plutonium in Guam, there's mm -hmm. plutonium in, in the western part of the United States. Mm -hmm. so, so this is a global problem and it needs a global solution. 
So it's not enough to say, oh, well, it's the Japanese people's problem, you know, the tough luck and all the rest of it. It's got to be sorted out very quickly because mm. huge amounts of these radionuclides are coming out of those reactors every minute mm. and, and nothing is stopping them. Mm. So, no, yes, no, there was one other thing that has to be... You have to, you have to monitor the air uh, concentration of these substances. So yeah. there has to be a ring... Just in the United Kingdom we have but nuclear sites, we put a ring of monitors around them. Uh, the government at the moment is not publishing the concentrations of a whole range of radionuclides which are extremely serious. Mm -hmm. All they do is they go around there and they measure cesium. Strontium-90, right. tritium, plutonium, uranium. Uranium mm -hmm. we now know to be one of the most serious uh, genotoxic elements yes. you know, in this form of particles that has ever existed. Mm -hmm. In the study that I did in Fallujah, um, we found uranium in the hair of, of, the, ch of the parents mm -hmm. of the children and we found enormous levels of congenital malformation huge levels of cancer mm -hmm. as a result of exposure to uranium. It's a nightmare. Well, you said that before, you said that so, several lectures you've said that um, this is the Fukushima problem issue. It's something that could trigger to change the whole world and how we can change the nuclear industry of the world. And, um, and so we were wondering why you think that why you think that this Japan uh, Fukushima problem ha or disaster yeah. can lead to change in the world stance? Okay, well the, the, the culture of the world has become complacent with regard to these sorts of science-based threats and Fukushima, the Fukushima problem has brought everybody up short suddenly out of the blue mm -hmm. there has been this accident which, which is, has, has unimaginably serious consequences mm -hmm. And what, what I believe it will do is to cause everyone to start questioning scientists, mm. to start questioning experts, and to start questioning the way in which we see the world in terms of truth that's handed down by experts and expert scientists, mm -hmm. who are actually nowadays not, not even really experts and not even really scientists in the sense that I understand the scientist who is somebody who searches for the, for the truth for the sake of the truth. Mm. And what I think I've said and I, and I believe that scientists nowadays are bought and sold by a big business. And so what the scientists will tell you and what the scientists will find is what big, big, big business uh, or, or even governments need in order to make money and mm. to be competitive in a sort of market forces jungle. Mm. Uh, and so, so actually nuclear power is, an abs is a perfect icon for the way in which the human race has gone astray mm -hmm. with regard to the most important things that, 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 that people, um, people need and people want. And so we, all, we are all kind of living in some sort of madhouse now where we're told what to do by scientists. And I hope and I believe that this Fukushima thing and, and the appallingness of it will cause everybody to sit up straight and say we have to rethink the way in which we see the world. Mm -hmm. We have to rethink the way in which scientists work and, and how we believe them uh, and whether we believe them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's been coming a long time, this is not new, that, 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 that this groundswell of opinion mm -hmm. with regard to the, uh, the effects of science on, on everyday life has been growing slowly, 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 slowly to it's got to a point now where it's almost like an explosive mass and I will hope that this particular um, disaster and that's partly why I'm here because mm -hmm. it will catalyze a total reappra reappraisal of, of this area mm -hmm. because it's not just nuclear although mm -hmm. nuclear is a perfect example of it and mm -hmm. it enables us to go into there and see what's happened mm -hmm. but it also uh, covers an enormous uh, uh, set of, of problems that the human race is facing mobile phones, are they dangerous? Right. genetically modified mm -hmm. food, is it dangerous? You know, is there really global warming? And if there is, what can we do about it? And in all of these areas, we rely upon, or I say we don't, but, the, but, but, but governments and policy makers rely upon evidence or, and, and advice that come from scientists who study these things. Mm. And what I want to say, that my message, is that these scientists are telling lies. For whatever reason, they're telling lies. So we have to actually... We have to find a way of, of, of doing science which is value-free. Mm -hmm. And there is such a way. There is such a way. It's not impossible. So it's almost like we're, we individuals have to be aware of it, to be alert whether this information that this yes, scientist is yes, releasing yes. is, whether it's true or not. 
We're kind of, we're, kind of on, we're, on the, we're on the we're on the deck of the Titanic, and the mm -hmm. captain is steering according to a plan which has been given to him by people who are false and who are lying, mm -hmm. and they're doing it for money. The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. The contamination from Fukushima has gone as far south as Tokyo. Uh, I have measured it personally in air filters from cars. At least 12 different air filters from cars were sent to me, some of them from the south of Tokyo, and many of them from 100 kilometers away from Fukushima. And they contain very large amounts of radioactivity in them, high, 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 high levels of cesium-134 and cesium-137. So we can conclude without any doubt that that area, up to 200 kilometers, maybe more, away from the catastrophe, catastrophe site, has been seriously contaminated with radionuclides. Now, if the cars are breathing this material, then so are the people, and so are the children. And so the children will be contaminated with radioactivity. We've recently heard that the Japanese government had been doing whole body counting, that is to say they've been putting some people inside a, a monitor to see how much cesium is inside them. And apparently the levels of cesium are sufficient for them to say that there's no problem, that there are not going to be any increases in ill health. At the same time we hear, I hear, reports from Japan, from mothers of children who say that they're showing all of the signs of contamination with cesium that were also found by my colleague Professor Yuri Bandashevsky after Chernobyl in the areas of Belarus that were contaminated similarly with this substance, cesium-137. And what it did there was that it went into the heart muscle and it caused conduction difficulties and destroyed heart, heart muscle. So the children in, in, uh, in Belarus were suffering heart attacks and arrhythmias. That's when the heart doesn't beat properly. And of course, later on in life, they die young from heart disease because the heart cells don't replicate themselves. The heart cells, you get all of your heart cells at once. You get maybe 1% uh, increase in heart cells per year. But over the period of time we're talking about, there's going to be no replacement for the cells that were damaged by the Fukushima catastrophe in the children. So we have two different points of view here. We have the point of view of the Japanese government, who are ignoring it, who are making these superficial measurements of cesium in the, in, in, in the whole bodies of the children and the people, and are saying that these concentrations are not sufficient to, to cause any, any problems. Well, of course, this is an argument that's going on and on. It's like a tennis match, goes backwards and forwards. You know, the, the, the independent scientists say there's a problem, and the government and the nuclear scientists say there's no problem. Of course, the real problem is that we have to do something about it. I mean, I, I, I am a father. I, I have seven children. I have 11 grandchildren. And I can't sit back and just let this go on with us in some sort of silly tennis match between us and the nu pro-nuclear scientists who are trying to save the industry from collapse. Uh, and all the time, the children are getting more and more sick, and, and, they're, and, and they're building up this level of radioactive damage, which will result in them getting sick and dying with cancer, heart disease, whole range of, of, Ill, of illnesses that were all discovered after Chernobyl. And it's not as if this is something new. We know what's going to happen. We absolutely know what's going to happen. We have looked very closely at the health effects of people who were exposed to these same radionuclides after the Chernobyl accident in the same quantities. Not as many people, I have to say, which is why Fukushima is a worse disaster. So I decided we had to do something, and I contacted, or I was contacted by some people in Japan who said, what can we do? So instead of just moaning about it, we decided to do something. Now, there are actually some things that we can do. The first thing we can do is we can actually measure the radionuclides ourselves, because frankly, we do not believe what the Japanese government is coming out with. We don't think that they're right. I mean, I've measured more radioactivity in a car air filter than they are measuring in a child. And the car breathes air in the same way as the child breathes air, so I don't really believe what they're saying. That's the first point. So we need to have independent testing. And secondly, we need to try and do something about these children who are being contaminated. There are two things we can do. The first thing is we can take them away from the areas of contamination and put them somewhere where it's reasonably safe. 
but that, re that, that leads us to another problem, because what's happening now, as I'm told, is that the Japanese government are trucking radioactive material from the Fukushima disaster area, where it's contaminated, all over Japan. And even as far south as the south of Japan, we're now getting reports of, of uh, radioactivity radioactive material being taken all the way to the south of Japan to be burned. Now what possible reason could there be for burning it as far away as that? I'll tell you the reason. It's really quite sinister and horrifying. The reason is this, that eventually when these children start to die from leukemia, from other cancers, from heart disease, from whatever, their parents are going to want to go into court. They're going to want to sue the Japanese government and they're going to want to have to say these, in order to do that, these children were contaminated and that's why they've got high levels of cancer. But of course, the only way that they can say that they've got high levels of cancer is to have a control group in an area that's not contaminated. For example, the south of Japan. So I believe that the project to take this material and burn it all over Japan is to destroy all of Japan. It's to increase the, the, the cancer rate in the whole of Japan so that there will be no control group to which you can compare these children in the Fukushima area. So that's that point. So we want to take the children away anyway into some safe area, that's, that's, the, that, that's what we want to do. But the second thing that we can do, and this is also quite important, is we can try and block the material. We can try and block the absorption of the cesium and the absorption of the strontium-90 and the plutonium and the other substances that are not being measured, incidentally. We have to wait a minute now because there's a train passing. I'm sitting on a children's playground here in um, Sweden. This is in Stockholm. And I decided to talk to you from here, from Stockholm, where there is a significant amount of radioactivity as well, I have to say, in the, in the Baltic Sea. I measured this myself, but that's another question. So the second thing we can do is we can try and block the ingress of the radioactivity into the child's body. Now we know that we can do this with iodine because iodine goes to the thyroid gland. We give them stable iodine, or at least we're supposed to. It turns out the Japanese government didn't. Um, and then it stops the bad iodine, the radioactive iodine, from binding to the same sites. And this, you can do the same thing with the other radionuclides. For uranium and plutonium and strontium-90, which are the most serious, and all of which they're not measuring, incidentally, and none of which can be measured with a whole body counter because they're alpha emitters or beta emitters, we can block that attachment to the DNA by giving large amounts of calcium and magnesium, which binds to the DNA and keeps the, the, the strontium and the uranium off the DNA. So that's one thing that these children can do. They can take a tablet every day of stable calcium. And so we are going to produce tablets which contain stable calcium, which we, call, which we will supply cheaply at the cost of production to parents of these children so that they can take these tablets and block the ingress of, of these substances. And we're also working on another tablet which will block the ingress of cesium-137. Now in order to do this, we have set up a, an organization in Japan called the Christopher Busby Foundation for the Children of Fukushima. And it has a website and it's all in Japanese and it's all being done by a colleague of mine who contacted me from Japan called James, called James Grand. Uh, in addition to this, we are going to purchase a large number of highly sophisticated radiation measuring devices for, uh, from Europe, from suppliers in Europe and, and suppliers in the Ukraine. And we're going to make these um, devices available to the parents of children to measure the concentrations of these substances in the food and also to supermarkets and we will measure the substances ourselves. We will set up a laboratory in, 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 in Japan so that people can bring these substances to the laboratory and find out the truth about the concentration of radionuclides in these substances. So these are the things that we want to do and we want you to help us to do this in any way that you can. This is an operation to save the children of Fukushima because we do not believe that the Japanese government is doing anything to save the children of Fukushima. They are operating on a principle which is the principle of saving not the children of Fukushima but the international nuclear industry. And this is disgraceful. Thank you for listening.
October the 29th, 2016. I'm Dana Gernfurt, your host of nuclearproctologist.org. And what you're looking at is Unit 4. Now, Dr. Christopher Busby is terrified of coming out and saying the fuel pool can't be in the building. He's horrified to say that there's damage to the reactor core to fuel pool, I guess, but he won't come out and talk about what you're looking at, the fake pictures. These are all the official pictures. He, he won't say they don't match up because he's worried about sounding about a, like a conspiracy theorist. He's worried that uh, the media will come out and make fun of him. He's not worried about telling the truth, I guess, but he's worried about the media coming out or somebody else demonizing him for saying Seth Dorn is not inside that building. It's not possible. He's not in, that's not, Seth's claim is in the fuel pool. The fuel pool is at the top of the building and the top of the building behind me is obviously gone. This is Unit 4 in Japan. What do you say to people like that? Do you say that they're disingenuous and they're deceptive and deceitful? Or do you say they have a legitimate concern? I'll leave it up to you in the comment section. Please email this to all of Dr. Christopher Busby's friends and associates and people who post his material and asked him to ask him the question. I want the question answered. I'm not asking, I'm demanding it. I'm Dana Durford, the nuclear proctologist.org. <laughs> we'll catch everybody on the rebound. Take care, folks.